Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to how to use a multi presser and uh, also a um, loudness limiter plugin inside Logic Pro for iPad. Before I continue, I would like to remind uh, my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Uh, today, we're also going to touch a little bit more on uh, also channel strip inside your mixer. So we are inside Logic Pro for iPad on an iPad Pro M1. Let's click on Create Project and select Tracks. Next, we're going to select patches loop samples because we don't want to create straight away a track. So we're going to reveal now the um, file app like so. And we're going to choose a already pre-recorded loop like so. Click, drag and drop on here on the track editor to create an audio track. And now let's close the file app and also let's um, close the browser. Let's click the select the loop, click again to reveal the contest menu, select a cycle, then selection. So we have an activated loop around the loop that we have imported. Perfect. Okay, that is what it sounds like. Now let's open up the mixer and this and uh, let's maximize the mixer view as well. So we are in edit mode at the moment as in setup mode. Let's go back to the mixer normal view. Now on the left hand side, you have a channel strip for your audio. Okay, the audio which is produced by that loop that we have imported. Of course, we can use the fader here to change the volume on that channel strip. And of course, if we set this down to zero, there is no more output. You can also act on the second channel strip here, which is a stereo output, which represents effectively your iPad physical output in this case. And I'm saying in this case because you could have an audio interface and therefore you could have outputs going directly to um, that audio interface, okay? And of course you can act on these as well to change the volume. Be and because I'm recording the output of the iPad, of course you you um, you will see a difference, you hear a difference on the volume um, of the loop being played. Like so, right? Then you have also a master uh, channel, strip, channel strip, which um, act um, for all the output uh, channel strip. In this case, we'll act only on this channel here because you have only one stereo output. So, as you can see, it drops the volume here on the stereo output channel um, strip, but the output here coming from the uh, that audio channel strip is still very much ongoing. And of course, you also have the representation here of the stereo output channel strip on the right hand side. Okay, let's move up. Let's go in setup mode. And now let's click where it says ear audio effect. And let's add the multipressor. And then also let's add a loudness meter. And then let's exit the setup mode. We go in mix mode. Now let's click on loudness meter. And what you can see here in this meter, it tells you a representation of your momentary short term and integrated signal level for the audio which is incoming. You have measurement in LUF, loudness unit relative to full um, scale. But you can also change this, uh, uh, this threshold and of course it gives you a different representation in terms of exceeding the threshold that you have set. But let's say that we leave this to uh, 40. You can see the levels here. You can also define the loudness range for a part of the loop which is being played. So in, to do that, click on start and you can see that the range there and you can see also the integrated signal level here. And when you can pause and you can also reset. So this is a nice plugin to actually show you that meter level. But now let's say that I want very much to reduce uh, that level because it is exceeding 14 lifts. So let's select the multipressor. And let's maximize the um, the window of uh, a multipressor. So multipressor is uh, a multi-band compressor. So it works really nice. It works on four bands. You can see the first one here, band one, band two, band three. And if you scroll down, you have the fourth band here. In terms of control, they are, of course, um, the same. So it's very straightforward to actually um, when, once you learn how to control a band, you can control all the others. You also have some global parameters here for look ahead from a compressor point of view. If you want to do auto gain and adjust or ultimately the master gain. 
But uh, uh, as I mentioned, um, it is a multi-band compressor and uh, between the different bands, you can, of course, decide the crossover. Okay, in this case, let's only use the first one. So I put this crossover frequency up to maximum. You can see the reduction here. You can see the bypass here uh, option. So you can bypass that uh, uh, bending in terms of compressor or you can solo only that one. Now, the reason that uh, it's great to have a multiband compressor is because you might decide to do compression on a signal only for a specific set of frequency, and that is the idea, so it gives you more option. Of course, in this case, we are um, trying to compress the signal down so that it doesn't exceed a certain level. We could have used, for example, also an adaptive limiter, which is another plugin, but the compressor works more gradually than the um, than a normal limiter. So here you have the compression threshold. Let's say that we set these to uh, 14. And then here the, you have the compression, uh, the compression ratio, which works as a normal compression. So I'll set these to maximum so that we have the maximum reduction. You have your attack. Um, and your release, as you would expect from a compressor. And then also you have a response time in, in the way that uh, the compressor responds to large or smaller uh, signal uh, picks, right? And then you have your makeup um, here again as well. So uh, let's see what it looks now. Let's click on loudness, and there it is. Okay, perfect. Let's go back to the multipressor. Let's change the uh, response like so. Let's go back to the... Uh, loudness, okay, uh, a little bit better. Let's also respond a little bit uh, to a smaller peak again. Loudness, you can see, um, works nicely. Okay, and uh, let's re change the release as well. So it will release much quicker. Perfect. And then what we are going to do, let's reduce a little bit more that response as well. Okay, so as you can see that it never goes above 14 loops now, which is um, quite nice, isn't it? Now, let's go back to the multipressor. You have also other option here, and which make the multipressor unique. You can also do downward expansion. So if it goes below this threshold, and um, you can also expand it, okay? And you set the duration here, and then uh, the expansion for this uh, reduction um, uh, fader here as well, which is really cool as, uh, as feature for the compressor. Okay, so let's listen. Okay, perfect. Now let's say that we want to export this. So uh, we are going to go to project eight here on the arrows, select export, click share, and then save the files. Decide to save in this folder, which is fine. Then let's uh, um, close the plugin editor and also the mixer. Let's remove the slope like so. Let's review again the uh, file up like so. Let's drag and drop now project A. Yes, we want to import information, uh, tempo information. Let's close the file up. Let's go now to the mixer. Let's go to the loudness meetup. <laughs> Let's now remove that uh, um, compressor, click and hold. Actually, let's go to uh, the setup mode and close this one. Let's remove the compressor like so. Let's uh, go back to mix mode, uh, select loudness meter. Let's click play. <laughs> And as you can see now, I don't have the compressor working. You can see it's below 14 loops as I wanted. And now you can be quite precise in terms of exporting your file precisely to the level that you desire. So in this case, we have used a multiband 
compressor, but of course there are other ways to compress or limit um, your signal, which we will see in other tutorials. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you find it useful. As always, see you next time. Bye.